and welcome everybody here in Twitch chats and everybody on YouTube for the green section of our Theros Beyond Death complete set review. This is where we're going to be going through each card in Theros Beyond Death and talking about its implications to standard. That's right, this is mostly a standard review um, where we're going to be giving each card a letter grade, but then also just talking about how you can use the card, how it matches up, and all of that kind of stuff for standard. Um, okay, so yeah, we've gone through white, blue, black, red, and green. Hope you've checked out some of those colors also if you are watching on YouTube. We're going to be giving a letter grade. Uh, if, for those of y'all watching on YouTube, you can uh, go down to the uh, info panel or like just the information of the um, uh, whatever it's called, just the ex extra information down below. There's a link to the uh, grading scale that we're going to be giving plus a link to the um, I mean, it's just the um, Google document with the grading scale and with all of the other grades um, that we've given from the other colors and stuff like that. So you can see the grades there. But of course, this is where we'll be going through the whole discussion and talking about the cards also. All right, so let's let's start uh, with our first card, um, Arasta of the Endless Web. 2GG for a 3-5 reach. Whenever an opponent casts an instant or sorcery spell, create a 1-2 green spider creature token with reach. This card is awesome. This card is very, very good. Um, a f you know, 4 mana 3-5 reach is just a good body on its own. It is a legendary card, so you know that you know that is does affect like how many you really want to be playing, all that kind of stuff. Um, but everybody plays instants and sorceries, like with everybody playing like adventure cards, stuff like that. Like, so your opponent's playing whenever they're playing uh, whatever instant sorcery, get more one twos. Um, yeah, this is just a really, really good card. Um, yes, YouTube viewers can see the chat. Yep, it's up. It's up. they are up here. Yep. Um, get an F for fully playable. Yeah, no, this is this is a, a really good solid card. Um, this is definitely my kind of card too. I like um, <laughs> four mana three five two rare or two fair. I mean, sure. Do you like defensive um, uh, <clears throat> def defensive slanted cards? Um, so you're saying this is no Ishkana? I think it's I think it's pretty comparable to Ishkana. You know, it costs one mana less than Ishkana. You don't get the one twos right away, but like if they're using removal on your Arasta, you're getting the one two when they use the removal. I think it's pretty comparable there. Um, so as far as a rating goes for our our grade scale, um, I don't know if this is like an A. Like A's, I want A's are like cards that are could be like four ofs in like multiple decks. I don't know if we're really there because it's a legendary creature. It is an enchantment creature though for all of your enchantment synergies, um, which we also talked about a little bit ago off stream. Talked about Satessian Champion giving you the, those enchantment synergies, letting you draw a card each time an enchantment enters the battlefield under your control. I didn't mention this card. I didn't really know about this card. <laughs> I didn't really mention this card during the other colors. I wish I did. Um, this is not a sideboard card whatsoever. Uh, I guess it could be a little bit of a sideboard card. I should say. It could be a little bit of a sideboard card. But I think this is like a, a good solid B. I think it's kind of like Torbrand level. You know, you play a couple uh, in some green decks. It can it can get played in a lot of different decks. I think it's kind of like Realm Cloak Giant Torbrand. Um, this is just this is a very good card. Um, I think I think I'd go like B to B plus, but we'll go with a B to start with. All right, uh, the binding. I mean. Ooze, ooze costs five mana. Like there's a really big difference between four and five mana. Just like there's a huge difference between three and three and four, four and five, five and six. Like every single one of those. So like comparing this to ooze, like comparing it to a five drop is is not really fair. Um, the biggest thing is that this doesn't match up that well against questing beast. It's like another four drop because you know it doesn't trade with questing beast. <clears throat> but besides that, it's a very good card. <laughs> the Binding of Titans. Uh, one green uh, for a saga first chapter. Each player puts the top three cards of their library into their graveyard. All right, so that's not really worth two mana, getting that. So then the next turn, exile up to two target cards from graveyards. So you can go like one in my graveyard, one in your graveyard. 
you know, you get to pick and choose that way. So you, know, you just exile up to two cards. For each creature card exile this way, you gain one life. So if you exile two creatures, you get to gain two life. Um, if you exile some spells, you don't. So, like, maybe you just get that. So that's still not not that valuable. And then third chapter, return target creature or land card from your graveyard to your hand. I think this is just going to be too slow, really. Uh, I think the, the main time you'd want to play this you know it's like you're finally getting like your creature back for your two mana when we have stuff like you know find finality that gets you two two cards back right away uh two creatures back right away we have like order of midnight that gets you a creature back right away and then you can also play a, a two two the main reason i think that you would want to play this is if the first chapter is quite valuable if um if you have a deck that's really trying to fill the graveyard and you're trying to rapidly fill the graveyard, I think that's the only way that you're really playing the binding of Titans. So we'll go with the D that, that could be, there could be a deck that you're trying to fill the graveyard up really fast. And that's where you could be playing this. I'll give it a D chain web Arachnir. Uh, green for a one, two reach when chain web, Arachnir enters the battlefield. It deals damage equal to its power to target creature with flying and opponent controls. And you can also escape for five and exiling four other creatures and it escapes with three plus one plus one counters on it. So when you escape, when you pay five and escape this, it enters in as a four five that deals four damage to target creature with flying and opponent controls. This card is awesome against like an Azorius Flyers deck that's playing a bunch of 1-1 Flyers. Like if your opponent's playing Healer's Hawk, great card. Um, however, that's kind of about it. This could definitely see a lot more play if it killed Gilded Goose. That's like the, the card with flying that you want to kill on turn one um, that sees more play in standard. Like if this did kill Gilded Goose right away, then we're talking. But this is kind of just like a sideboard card or just like a card that basically is only going to get played in the format if flying becomes a big deal but otherwise um i mean we have like crowd harpooner of course i know a lot somebody's probably saying that but yeah we just um we have crowd harpooner uh i mean it when it escape it kills more flyers but like as far as like turn one um not killing too many flyers there so um yeah i mean it is I mean, it is good. Like whenever you escape it, it does it does come back better. So maybe maybe I'm under undervaluing that escape. You know, you play it as a one two. You chump block with it. Later on, it's it's a five mana, four five. Which that's a that's a pretty good body for like a second creature. So yeah, that's that's certain certainly playable. Yeah. So let's yeah. That's what I kind of like the that C minus rating. I kind of like that. As far as our ratings go, let's go C minus. Destiny Spinner, one G for an enchantment creature. It's a two three creature and enchantment spells you control can't be countered. I am into that. Uh, three G target land you control becomes an XX elemental creature with trample and haste until end of turn where X is the number of enchantments you control. It's still a land. So you can sp spend four mana turn like a land into a one one. It's fine. But yeah, a two mana two three enchantment creature like that's not bad you know that's like your thorn lieutenant um it gets killed pretty easily but then also like your other spells can't be countered it's a great card against like simic flash is it flash all this all these counter spell decks um so it could even be a cyborg card against against uh counter spell decks like that it doesn't die to bone crusher giant so that's awesome um yeah i like i like this card yeah yeah i like this card i i don't i mean as far as our ratings go, I mean, I don't think that this is like an A or anything like that. Um, but I could see this being like a B, a good amount of standard play in like a support role, a moderately played cyborg car kind of thing. I think this could be just like a, a good solid B. Yeah, very, very good cyborg card too. So yeah, let's give this a B. Uh, the review for the for youtube each each video is like there's a white video there's a blue video there's a black video and so on like white blue and black are already up on youtube red is uploading right now each each color is a video <clears throat> all right uh dryad of the elysian grove 2g for a 2-4 enchantment creature 
You may play an additional land on each of your turns and lands you control are every basic land type in addition to their other types. All right, so if you don't really understand what that second line means, basically that means that each land that you control is now going to be a plains, an island, a mountain, a swamp, and a forest as well as other types that it may have. So that means it can mountains can always tap for, for red mana. Um, a island can tap for a blue mana, and so on. And so each land is a five-color land that you have. And you can also play an additional land. And you also have a very good 2-4 blocker. It's not legendary, so you can play this and... Um, you can play two of them, and you can copy it with you know any any copy spell like a quasi duplicate. You can get more of them, then you can play more lands. So definitely really good. I think this is this is an A. I don't think this is a card that's going to get banned. <laughs> um, but yeah, no, I, I wish we had Corsair Crew Fix instead. But um, you know you can only play you know uh, <clears throat> this is the kind of card like Way, Wayward Swordtooth. We just had Wayward Swordtooth in standard. There was a three mana five five that you could play additional lands, but of course you couldn't attack or block with the Wayward Swordtooth until you had um, the city's blessing, until you ascended, and uh, therefore that card didn't, didn't see very much play because it was hard to ascend and hard to actually attack or block. This is a two four that does get to a bl block right away, and I think therefore this is going to see more play. Of course, it has the enchantment creature bonus. It turns all your lands into five color lands, so it's very easy to splash and very easy to cast other things. Your lands don't add two colors of mana. You don't have, um, you know, so it's not like you tap your your land and then it adds all five colors. Like it's not it's not like that. It's just you get to choose what what color. It just turns all your lands into um, like a, a city of brass, a mana confluence or a city of brass that's that's not doing damage to you. Um, so. You get to play additional lands. Now, if you don't have additional lands in your hand, that's not really helping you out. Think about like a Boreal Grazer. How many times you've like played turn one a Boreal Grazer, play that extra land with a Boreal Grazer, and then like two turns later, you're out of lands in hand. And then you're like, well, I'm not sure if that really helped that much. So with this kind of card, you, you really want a lot of lands in your hand. So therefore, you need a lot of card draw or a lot of ways to put lands into your hand. This would pair well with like explore creatures if we still had those, um, but just cards that get you a lot of like a lot of card draw. That's what you want. Um, one card that comes to mind, uh, yeah, Golos. Yeah, this works really. Yeah, this does really help Golos and Niv Mizzet for sure. Yeah, both of those. Um, yeah, all lands are forests with Nissas. Yep. So all all lands, you know, can add to like if you have Nissa in play, they can add a green mana plus and it, any other additional color could be another green or a, you know a green and a blue or a green and a red and so on. Um, one card that just kind of stands out to me right away, you know, besides Nissa with this is like Escape to the Wilds. That's five mana, you know you exile the top five cards of your library and it it's, can be difficult to play all those cards but if you're playing a card like dryad you get those extra land drops you get to escape to the wilds pretty early like if you play this card on turn three you get to play an additional land immediately now you have four mana you untap you play a land you have five you escape to the wilds you get to play you know you can can play another land for six escape to the wilds again uh you get all those extra cards you get extra lands like that kind of card um, like those kind of cards like Escape to the Wilds are really what you want to be playing here because you just want to be able to churn through your library really fast. And that's what that card does. It goes through five cards. You get get all those extra lands, play them. Now you have lots of extra mana. Now you get to play all sorts of other stuff. Um, but yeah, Niv Mizzet Reborn, that can get you a lot of extra cards. Niv Mizzet Reborn doesn't really help you get extra lands. Um, <clears throat> but yeah, you so you get, uh, yeah, you turn one, yeah, Gilded Goose. Definitely really likes this card because Gilded Goose, you can ramp into this, start playing extra extra lands, uh, start playing other stuff. Um, uh, but yeah, it does. So it's, it is kind of like a Boreal Grazer. Like the problem with the Boreal Grazer is you need lots and lots of lands. That's the problem, problem with this card too. You really want to play lots and lots of lands. And so you want to, you probably want to play like 26, 27, 28 lands in a deck with Dryad to really, really power dryad but if you're playing a deck with that many lands you need to have spells like escape to the wilds 
that can get you, that can be worth a whole lot. Like things that are not just two for ones. You need things that are bigger than two for ones. So yeah, Dryad, pair it with Escape to the Wilds, pair it with Hydrocrasis, with Nyssa, all that kind of stuff. Have fun. Um, obviously, I'm giving this card an A. Um, yeah, I mean, I'm just giving this card an A. Yeah, the ramp in Standard is completely absurd right now. <laughs> there is so much good ramp in Standard. It is very absurd. All right, uh, you know, I've been playing Standard heavily, like really playing a whole lot of Standard since um alara block you know basically since alara Zen zendikar like that standard format and um this is the best ramp has ever been that i can ever remember even when we had primeval even when we had primeval titan and uh then we had like the eldrazi as well like with primeval titan ramp still wasn't this good all right the first iroan games uh do I like green being good? I like green being good, but I don't really like ramp being this good. I don't like that part of green. I like I like enter the battlefield creatures and and mid-range creatures. I like that. I don't really like ramp as much. <clears throat> All right, the first I row in games, two and a G. Um, create a 1-1 one, one white human soldier creature token. Hey, what's up, Adurial? Yeah, we'll get to Nyx Elemental. Um, thank you so much. That's our 24th sub of the day. <laughs> uh, Tuna G for a saga. So first chapter, you just make a 1-1, one, one, okay? Second chapter, you put three counters on target creature you control. Okay, so you get to grow any creature, put three counters on it. That's that's pretty nice. Like, that's that's honestly, like, just just a very good... Um, ability. Uh, third, third chapter. If you control a creature with power four or greater, draw two cards. Also very nice. You know, hopefully because the second one you have your creature power four or greater. Also you can, you know, follow this up with like a questing beast. Now you have a creature power four or greater. Now you have two of them. You know, they use a removal spell on one and so on. In the fourth chapter, you just get to create a gold token, so you get to ramp uh, by turn four. You get that extra mana to be able to use your extra cards with. Honestly, a pretty good saga. The thing is, is there's so much competition in green. I'm not sure if we're, we're really ever playing this. Um, you know, I, I yeah, basically that's the thing. There's so much competition in green. I don't know if we're ever really playing this. Um, yeah, okay, yeah. So for a gold token, everybody's saying what it is. It's it's a treasure token. A gold token is a, is a token that you sacrifice to create a mana of any color. Um, So this is the first round games is exceptional with all the Selesnya adventures. It pumps fairies, draws cards, triggers love struck beasts. Yeah. Yep. But still, does that mean we're even playing? I don't know. I don't know. Um, so yeah, we get three, three mana for it. You get a lot of stuff, but there's still just a lot of good things in standard there. Um, I think I'm going to go, go ahead and give this like a B. Um, yeah, you don't tap the gold token, you just sacrifice it. So, yeah, I mean, I, yeah, if there's a um, a Karn in play, you get to use it, I guess. No, you still don't get to use it, probably. I don't know. You can also loop it with Shepard. What's Shepard? Do you loop it? I don't know what Shepard is. But I guess you can loop it with Shepard, whatever that means. Um, Shepherd of the Flock. Oh, yeah, yeah. You can put it back into your hand with Shepherd of the Flock after the the draw two cards. You can put it back. Um, yeah, yeah. That adventure thing, because Shepherd of the Flock is any permanent. The when you usher to, usher to safety. Um, but yeah, so it's a it's a it's a pretty solid card. Um, a gold token is just like a, it's just it just adds one mana of any color. You you sack it and adds one mana of any color. Uh, so yeah, so I think I'm going to be going with like a, a B minus. 
here for first our own games basically it, it is a very good card but there's just so much competition i'm not sure really how much we're we're playing this card i'm going to give it a, a b minus but it's a good one all right gift of strength one g instant target creature gets plus three plus three and gains reach so giant growth costs an extra mana but you get reach um yeah this is just going to be like an, an l a limited card um, but but a good a good limited trick. I'm gonna give it an L. Hydra's growth, two energy enchant creature enchantment aura enchant creature. And when Hydra's growth enters the battlefield, put a plus one plus one counter on enchanted creature. And at the beginning of your upkeep, you double the number of one one counters on enchanted creature. I think the only re way you're playing this is if you you're playing it where the enchantment aura matters. You know, like you have stuff like where. You know, like Heliod's Pilgrim, that you can go find an aura. You have your um, Cetessian Champion that draws cards for your enchantments. Um, you know, that that's like really the only reason why we're playing this card. Um, uh, you could put it as an enchantment. So some put enchantment on Stone Coil Serpent. That's true. You could put it on Stone Coil Serpent or Yorvo, like those kind of things. Hydroid Crasis and double but i still don't think we're playing that i think i'd rather just play like another stone coral serpent or whatever i'm gonna give it an l uh i guess i'll give it like a d minus it's a card you can maybe see in standard but i don't think it's that great all right kalua king uh, thanks for getting that resub in here sub number 25 on the day 26 looks like i was one behind 26 Um, Hyrax Tower Scout, two and a G for a three three. When it enters the battlefield, untap target creature. Probably just a limited card, but that's a, a very solid three mana three three. You get to attack, untap your attacker. Pretty cool limited card. All right, one G for a one one Illusion Caryatid. Add one mana of any color. If you control a creature with power four or greater, add two mana of any one color instead. Okay, so like our, our Sylvan Caryatid uh, is, you know, like a little different now. Um, yeah, the, the Tower Scout can work with, with Vanifar. Sure, yeah, you can you can get this and untap your Vanifar and then sack it and go get something else. Um, so, yeah, I mean, I guess you can you can play it there. Um, I guess, so I guess we'll go D minus because, yeah, I guess you could play it there. Because I guess you, you could go, you could take a one drop and go corridor monitor, you know, Vanifar your one drop into corridor monitor, untap your your Vanifar, sack your corridor monitor, get your tower scout, untap your um, Vanifar, sack your tower scout. Now you're at a four drop. I don't know exactly what four drop you want to grab, you know, but you can turn a one mana card into a four mana card in one turn. I don't know if there's a four drop that says ETB untap a creature. I don't know how, how much you can go with that. But yeah, like this is just, this is just, more ramp like i don't think you're playing like i think you're playing paradise druid instead of this like i don't think you're playing this over paradise druid um but for the decks that play like paradise druid plus um incubation druid maybe you start playing this instead of incubation druid even though incubation druid can turn into a three five and add three mana but just this ability to add two mana is a lot easier so maybe we're maybe we're playing this over incubation druid um but I think uh, I don't think you're replacing Paradise Druid. That hex proof on Paradise Druid is so good. Think of how many times you play against Paradise Druid, and you can't you know like stomp it or use whatever removal spell like Legion Send anything like that on it because of that hex proof, and they get to always always at least tap it once. Um, but <clears throat> but yeah, if you want. Um, What's it called? If you want to ramp even more and have, you know, maybe play like a ley line, a, a ley line deck, like a green ley line deck, and you want even more mana creatures, this is probably either the second or third best mana creature. Like Paradise Druid is the best one for two mana. You know, you have Gilded Goose, Paradise Druid, then either this or Incubation Druid. It's, uh, I'm not exactly sure which one we're going with, but um, so as far as the rating goes, you know, that's still. A pretty good card. I think I'm at like C plus B minus because of the other really good. Like if there wasn't other really good um, cards, two mana mana creatures, there weren't other great ones. We'd probably give this a higher rating, but I'm going to give it a C plus as is.
Um, Leafkin, if, if you're just green, then yeah, Leafkin, if you're just green, but give it a C plus. All right, Inspire Awe, three and a G instant, prevent all combat damage that would be dealt this turn, accept combat damage that would be dealt by enchanted creatures and enchantment creatures, scry two. No, thank you. L, I don't think we're trying to play any fogs in Questing Beast days, especially not four mana ones. Clothius's Design, 5G sorcery creatures you control get plus X plus X until end of turn where X is your devotion to green. It's pretty cool for limited. You can give this an L. Just six mana. I mean, even though this can be like your creatures get plus four plus four plus five plus five, you know, plus six plus six. But still, I mean, we're talking about six mana here. We 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 have better things to be doing in standard. Losum Chimera, 2G for a 4-1 but it also can escape for five with a plus one plus one counter on it. All right. L. Mantle of the Wolf. All right, this is a rare. Three and a G enchantment aura. Enchant creature gets plus four plus four. And when Mantle of the Wolf is put into a graveyard from the battlefield, create two, two, two green wolf creature tokens. I mean, if... If you're playing like an, an aura deck matters, you know, like Heliod of the Pro Pilgrim, stuff like that, like this is this is a very good aura to put on your own creature. Plus four plus four is a lot of numbers. You know, like that's two big crooked numbers there. And then you get to make two wolves. Maybe you're playing like a wolf deck also. You could do some stuff with this. I'm gonna give this a D. Yeah. Um, Moss Viper, one mana, one one death touch snake. I don't think we're playing this card. I think I'm going to give it a D, though. Card that you could maybe see, you know, super fringe and standard that you could maybe see pop up in standard. Death touch is cool. I'll give it a D as well. All right, Mystic Repeal, one mana instant, put target enchantment on the bottom of its owner's library. This could be a pretty big cyborg card. Um, if gods become a big thing, if enchantment decks become a big thing, um, you know, like with this Centassian card, like if people start playing a lot of enchantments, like this is basically exile the enchantment for one singular mana. Um, you know, I know we have like return to nature. They can destroy an artifact or enchantment or exile something on the bottom, but you know, that is just destroyed. This is, this does get rid of gods super, super well. Um, yeah, it's, it's basically path to exile. Yeah, basically. So, uh, a very good card here. So a, a, um, I don't think it's like an A level cyborg card, but probably like a, a B or a B plus level side work card i'm gonna give it a b it's either it's either like b b plus like in that range i'm just gonna give it a b because it is an enchantment or because it is a side work card um it could be so good like this kind of card could be so good that it makes playing enchantments worse and so then people play less enchantments because of a card like mystic repeal because of how efficient it is i'll give it a b for now Nessian Boar, 3GG for a 10-6. What? All creatures able to block Nessian Boar do so. Whenever Nessian Boar becomes blocked by a creature, that creature's controller draws a card. L. <laughs> All right, so... I mean, I guess, yeah, Ember Cleave is the only way a board wipe. That's cool. I guess, yeah, I guess if you want to Ember Cleave it, all right, D. We'll give it a D. Because, yeah, if you want to Ember Cleave this, all right. Or fling it. Sure. All right, we'll go with D. <clears throat> yeah, D for the memes. 11 7 double strike trample. All right, Nessian Horn Beetle, 1G22 at the beginning of combat on your turn. If you control another creature, 
with power four or greater, put a plus one plus one counter on Nessian Horn Beetle. L. Yeah, I guess you could have this with, with Narset. It's kind of a weird deck that you're putting together, a Narset plus Nessian board deck. All right, Nessian Wanderer, 1G, 1-3. Whenever an enchanted enchantment enters the battlefield under your control, look at the top three cards of your library. You may reveal a land from among them and put it into your hand. Put the rest on the bottom of your library in a random order. Wow, this card's good. This card's good. I don't think I knew about this card. So this is... I mean, this is basically like the champion that whenever an enchantment enters, you draw a card. And this is... This is you draw a card, but you're always drawing a land. The reason why this card is so good is because of Dryad. Like, this card works perfect with Dryad. It gets you extra lands that you get to play with Dryad. And Dryad, of course, is an enchantment creature. Um... And yeah, you get to just keep on getting those extra lands so you can keep on playing them with Dryad. Like Dryad, like this pairs so well with Dryad. Um, Constellation means like whenever an enchantment enters the battlefield. Um, so that's that's where you want Wanderers. You want Wanderer with Dryad. And then each time you keep playing an enchantment, grab another land, you get to play an extra land a turn anyway. You get to really ramp with all these extra lands. Um, and then, you know, keep playing your Escape to the Wilds, your, your, um, Hydroid Crisis, you know, all, all like, you know, all whatever kind of cards you want like that, your Gadwick. Um, yeah, I mean, you just get to play Gadwick because all of your lands tap for blue, so it's easy to play a triple blue Gadwick. Why not? Draw, draw all the cards in the world. Um, so yeah, grading skill, maybe like a C. Yeah. Seems like seems like a, a good old C. Uh, a good standard filler card. Nexus Wardens. Two and a G for a 1-4 with reach. Uh, Constellation. Whenever an enchantment enters the battlefield under your control, you gain two life. I think this could definitely be a cyborg card. I, I like this as against flyers as like a blocker, but then also just against like red aggro. Um, if we're playing like an enchant very enchantment heavy deck like that we're talking about with some of this other stuff, you just get to gain two life each time you play your enchantment, gain two life, play a new enchantment, gain two life. And it's just a good blocker as a one four, you know. So this is definitely like an anti mono red sideboard card. Whether it's the best anti mono red sideboard card in the format, whether maybe there's other things that you can be doing. Um I'll give it a D for now, but like that's where you could play this Nexus Wardens. Um, I think it's it's more it's more so that you'd play it for that than play it for being a one four reach, like for blocking flyers. Nylea keen eyed, three and a G five six indestructible. As long as your devotion to green is less than five, Nylea isn't a creature. So your creature spells cost one less to cast, and it also has two and a G reveal the top card of your library. If it's a creature, you may put it into your hand. Otherwise. You may put it into your graveyard. What's so this creature you just put it into your hand automatically? So if it's like a land, you can keep it on top if you want, or you can put it in the graveyard. Wow. Nylea is good. And it's just perfect with these other cards. You know, like playing Wanderer for just a G, that's a lot better. You know, now you're playing Dryad for one in a G. Um, and, you know, you're playing your, and it's an enchantment creature of course so it triggers this and now you know you're playing your centesian champion for a one in a g also but also enchantment so you trigger that um yeah and you just keep on getting more you know since you're since you're ramping a lot like with the dryad and you have lots of lands in play what do you want with a lot of lands in play well you get you get this activated ability it's just a great mana sink that uh just three mana top card is a creature sweet draw it if not you try again if you want um yeah yeah so that yeah what goes with ramp yeah you get cheaper creatures to go with your ramp and then you also get this this ability you just get to keep on using and using and using um i mean if, if it whiffs you put in i mean you, first you get to build your deck so it doesn't 
whiff very much. I mean, it'll probably whiff on like all the lands and stuff like that. But if it whiffs, you know, you do get to put it into your graveyard, so you can try again. Also. Oh yeah, Great Henge. Oh yeah. Yeah, you definitely put like the Great Henge in, into these kind of decks. Sure, why not? <clears throat> yeah, it's that's definitely the great that doesn't just automatically go to the graveyard. You get to choose. Yeah, another really good card here. Um, I'm not sure if we're giving it an A. I don't think we're like playing. I mean, I don't know. Maybe we're playing a 4x Nylea deck. It does make your creature spells cost less. Um, I'm kind of thinking like A minus B plus around there. I kind of think I'm going to go B plus. Yeah, well, while three mana is a lot for that ability, you're also just getting your four mana five six that also all your other creatures are costing one less. So like your your Gadwicks and your Hydroy Crisis and you know all that kind of stuff costs one less. Um, and your Nyx Bloom Ancients that we'll talk about later that costs one less also. Yep, there's a lot of very good four mana cards to play in green, but you know it is an enchantment. And you know it has has a lot of good upside and everything. I'm giving, I'm going B plus. All right, Nylea's Forerunner, four G five three trample. Other creatures you control have trample. You're basically only playing this if you really need that. Other creatures you control have trample. You probably don't. I think we're going to give this an L, but I guess you could play this card. You know, it is again. It's it costs four mana with Nylea. Um, you know, it is an enchantment creature again for all these other enchantment for all the enchant enchantment synergies. Um, so I guess I guess we'll go with like a D minus. We'll go with D minus. Nylea's Huntmaster, three and a G four three and enters the battlefield. Target creature you control gets plus X plus zero until end of turn where X is your devotion to green. That one's gonna be a limited card. Nylea's Intervention, XGG, sir. choose one. Search your library for up to X land cards, reveal them, put them into your hand to shuffle your library, or deal twice X damage to each creature with flying. Certainly a very good sideboard card against, if there does turn out to be an Azorius Flyers deck, this basically kills any any like real chance for Azorius Flyer, like any Flyer deck to be a heavy part of the metagame because of how good green is and all the green decks if if it, that ever happens green decks can just be like well we'll just play a bunch of nylea's interventions and you're like well i'm dead um but obviously that doesn't mean that everybody's just gonna be playing nylea's interventions and you can't play flyer decks it's just not like flyer decks won't be like the you know top three decks of the metagame kind of thing um but yeah this gets any kind of land any land cards which is probably amazing in different older formats but um it's got to be amazing in uh you know commander go grab your guy's cradle <laughs> and stuff like that but as far as standard goes um there's not a lot of of really great land cards to grab you know you can go grab like your temples and stuff and then like there's there's like some different colorless lands you can go grab like your blast zone and your uh fog land that we'll have later on um and things like that but just getting extra lands in your hand really good with dryad um you know, like you, so this is like at four mana, you draw two, five mana, draw three, six mana, draw four. There's, there's kind of just better card draw, you know, whether we're playing, want to play like to, to pat, to pair with Dryad, probably as we talked about, like Escape to the Wilds is basically five mana, draw five. This is like five mana, draw three, and their lands. Uh, standard. So, yeah, so basically, I don't think we really need this too much in standard. Um, but uh yeah imagine with field of the dead legal but um but i could definitely see this being a big card in commander and other formats um yeah you can go grab your fail passages if you want it costs six mana to do that uh let's see so i'm i'm gonna kind of give this like a, a d honestly Uh, probably more people have, um, guys cradle, uh, proxies than real guys cradles, but yeah, it's, I, mean, I think it's more than that. I think it's like, I think it's more than 200 bucks, I think, but a lot, of, a lot of people in commander let you proxy stuff. 
Yeah, no, I, I know about the Nyx Bloom Ancient. But yeah, all right. So anyway, Nyx Herald, uh, two and a G, two, three, enchant creature at the beginning of combat on your turn. Target enchanted creature or enchantment creature you control gets plus one, plus one, gains trample until end of turn. We'll just give this one an L. Uh, Nyx Bloom Ancient. 4 GGG Mythic 5-5 five, five, Trample. If you tap a permanent 4 mana, it produces 3 times as much of that mana instead. This does not seem like a reasonable card to print. This just seems like a... Yeah, they're just this just seems very unreasonable. Uh, this, I can't imagine this stays legal in Commander for very long. I don't know why... Like I don't know how this is reasonable in commander like how how are you supposed to play other colors besides green in commander when you just get to, get to do this that's ridiculous um yeah that's this just not just why like why does this need to be printed uh yeah just does, doesn't seem like a necessary card yeah it's not legendary um yeah it's an elemental so in standard, what do you want to do with this in standard? Um, one, it you can play Fires of Invention if you want, and you can play this. Like if you have Fires of Invention, you have seven lands in play because you've been ramping with all these other things that let you play extra lands. So then with your seven lands in play, you get to play this. Then now your seven lands, they all tap for three times as much mana. So they can all tap for, so you get 21 mana. So you're saying, well, what can you do with 21 mana? Well, basically anything whether it's Gadwick, Hydrocrasis, or just a finale. You know, any of the finales, you know, you're doing, like, finale for 19. Um, basically, like, turn, turn what, turn four? You can go, if you go, like, even if you, if you just play this Dryad card. Whoa, that was way too much. We play our Dryad card. Let's just kind of think of, even if we play this thing on turn three. Like, let's not even say you go Gilded Goose into this. So you play this on turn three. And then you get to play your fourth land also. Turn four, you can play, like, your... You get to play lands five and land six. Maybe you play another Dryad, so you get to play, like, land seven. But you don't you don't really have to. But, you know, like, turn four, you're playing your Fires of Invention and playing something else with six, you know, with six lands. You know, something to refill your hand. And maybe, maybe we're talking about... Um, you know, like turn four, you could play like the Fires of Invention, plus you play the uh, the card that I've been talking about, the five mana sorcery, Escape to the Wilds. You can play like an Escape to the Wilds. That you know that helps. You know, then after you play Escape to the Wilds, you can even play Land Number Seven <laughs> there. Uh, and you know, it just helps you dig dig farther into your deck, find your next Bloom Agent. So then turn five, you get to play Nyx, Nyx Bloom Agent. You can even play land number eight, land number nine also with because of your Dryad. So you play Nyx Bloom Agent, you have nine mana, you have nine lands, then, then you play, you know, any finale for 25. You, so you can do finale X is 25, turn five. Mm -hmm. And that doesn't seem like that unreasonable of a curve that we just had. We just talked about playing a three drop on three and, and then a Fires of Invention and, and so on. Um. Yeah. So then, yeah. When you have like other permanents that add mana, like Lotus Field adds nine mana now. With this, um, you know, like your mana rocks that can add two mana, you triple it, so they they start adding more. Um, yeah, like even like your Incubation Druid that would tap for three mana, now it taps for nine mana, kind of thing. Like you you can definitely do ridiculous stuff with this. Um, I don't the the ramp in standard is pretty insane. I don't think that like getting to seven mana is that difficult. You you know you certainly play all your growth spirals and and your dryads and all sorts of stuff like that. Obviously your Nissa lands tap for a just a ton of mana. Um, it seems very easy to get to this, and then with this you know you want uh, you know you want like four Gadwick, four Hydroid Crisis. You know, like that kind of stuff. And then like your finales, you know, like blue, you know, get some blue finales, white finales, I don't know, green finales, whatever, whatever color finales you want. Um, it's not too difficult to get there. Um, but yeah, so there we go. So Nyx Blue Ancient, I'm giving this thing an A. Um, it's just very absurd. 
Uh, you get your enchantment, enchantment creature bonuses. You get your elemental bonuses. Um, yeah. Castle Garenbrig adds 18 green mana. Yeah, you activate Castle Garenbrig. Um, and it's easy to activate Castle Garenbrig because you just tap... Uh, you tap, like, two lands. Your two lands produce six mana. And then your castle, you get to activate off of that six mana. So it's not like you're, like, tapping, like, four other lands plus your castle. <laughs> it's just absurd. Uh, yeah, so... And then you just go go play your green, green finale and all that kind of stuff. Yeah. Okay, so that's that's an A. Uh, Nextborn Colossus three GGG for a six seven. We'll go an L for this one. I mean, it it just makes it it makes it really hard to play other like how are you supposed to play like a a a white mid range creature deck or you know just like other mid range creature decks whenever you can just go so over the top. Like, how are you supposed to play other... Like, I like mid-range creature decks, and this kind of stuff, this kind of ramp just completely annihilates mid-range creature decks that I like. Like, the, the decks I like are, like, defensively slanted mid-range decks where you grind out the opponent, and this just goes way over the top of those kind of decks and just annihilates those kind of decks. So, I don't like it. <laughs> I'm sad. All right, Omen of the Hunt, two and a G, flash. When it enters the battlefield, search your library for a basic land card. Put it on the battlefield tap, then shuffle your library. Um, and then uh, and uh, two and a G, sacrifice Omen of the Hunt, scry two. So yeah, so this is uh, rampant growth for three mana, something that we've seen a lot of in standard. Um, uh Beanstalk Giant, you know, like we've seen like Beanstalk Giant with Lucky Clover be able to ramp a lot. Of course, this would be like your Beanstalk Giant without the Lucky Clover. Um, but then instead of having like the expensive Beanstalk Giant creature, you have this Tuna G sacrifice it's Scry 2. But then, of course, you also get your other um, enchantment bonuses. You know, like if you play the Wanderer first and then you play this to ramp, then you also get to put another land into your hand, basically, as long as there's a land in your top three cards. See so, you how know, this can turn into uh, if you're curving that two drop and then you're trying to either hit Omen or Dryad. Uh, if you play Omen, then you know you ramp one and put a land into your hand, so you get that extra. You know, you get to like draw another card that way also. So that's pretty sweet. So this is this is a pretty decent card. Then later on, when you have all your mana, you get to sack this Scry two. Um, and then of course, you know, if you have like a Satessian Champion in play, you get to draw a card also. So just an, another good um, enabler for these other enchantment cards, and also just another good ramp piece, which you know, green like it just just works again with all all of these cards. Like they've kind of like built their own enchantment ramp deck. You just kind of throw all of these uh, Theros enchantment ramp cards together. Um, so let's see. I think we're kind of looking at like a, a C plus B minus kind of thing for our rating. We'll go. I'll go like B minus. Or maybe C plus because there's just a lot of other good options as well, but you're kind of you're kind of looking at like like that kind of ranking. I'll go B plus. I'll go B minus. It is nice that it has flash. So you can like hold up mana for like something else if you're playing like other if you're playing instants for some reason, and then you can just play it at at end step whenever your opponent doesn't real like your like maybe you just play your two drop. You pass. You have this up. Your opponent like does stuff and they don't realize that you're about to play Nissa the next turn because you're just gonna play this ramp to four untap player fifth land drop nissa and they weren't expecting a nissa all right next card uh the band brawler four gg for a four four when it etbs it fights a creature this is just going to be an l it's kind of like the um affection affectionate indrick card that we have in standard all right plummet um i think this is a standard card maybe Maybe not. Um, but yeah, we'll go with like a D minus. Yeah. This is maybe a card you see in your sideboards at some point. But really, honestly, this is basically just a limited card. This really shouldn't really have that in your standard. Like there's there's probably better things to be doing in standard than that. But I'll give it a, B, a D minus. 
Relentless Pursuit, two and a G sorcery. Reveal the top four cards of your library. You may put a creature card and or a land card from among them into your hand. Put the rest into your graveyard. <clears throat> if you are a graveyard deck, um, you know, if you can really take advantage of the other cards that you're putting into your graveyard, that makes Relentless Pursuit even better. Um, but still, if you're playing like the decks that we're talking about, that's playing a ton of creatures and a ton of lands, this is, you know, a nice little draw to... Uh, with some selection there also but however if you are playing like that kind of like Nylea deck that we're talking about with a lot of creatures a lot of lands you have to put a sorcery in your deck here for this and you don't really you probably don't really want sorceries in that kind of deck so I'm not sure so I don't think you really put this in that kind of deck I think you really want to really want to value the cards in your graveyard uh, to play Relentless Pursuit in in uh, in standard so I think I think we're gonna kind of go with like a C here. I mean, this is this is definitely a, a playable card, um, but pretty fringe stand fringe card that could be used as filler for certain decks. I think we're looking at C, um, maybe C minus, honestly. But it, you are drawing two for for three mana. I'll go with the C. Renata called to the hunt. Two GG star three. It's de devotion. Its power is equal to your devotion to green, and each other creature you control enters the battlefield with an additional plus one plus one counter on it. This seems like the strongest of the demigods that we've kind of talked about, but it's also the most expensive at four mana. Um, I guess the red one was was okay too, um, but yeah, you know you, your other creatures get additional one one counters on it. For all the great stuff you can do with green at four mana, though, we're not we're not playing this card. Um, really, the only the only way we're playing this card is if we really need another enchantment creature. You know, just get another enchantment kind of thing. I'm going to give it an L. The red one left like a 1-1 one, one behind whenever it died. All right, then obviously Return to Nature. That's a pretty decent sideboard card. Um, you know, one that, that definitely saw some, some play here. We'll give it like a, a D plus or a C minus. I mean, I think that that's where we're at. It's like a D plus, C minus. Um, I guess, I guess a C, I guess we'll get go C minus. Satessin champion two G one, three, whenever an enchantment enters the battlefield under your control, put a plus one, plus one counter on Satessin champion and draw a card. So this format, this is this format's risen, or this is this sets risen reef or edge wall innkeeper. So we got it. So we do have another one of these, um, this time you know, this is, it's kind of like a mix between the two. It's three mana like Risen Reef. It starts as a 1-3, so it starts as a, as a better blocker. Um, and then you draw cards like Innkeeper. You don't just get to put the cards into play like Risen Reef. Um, but then you also get to put plus one, plus one counters on the champion. So you actually get to keep drawing it also. But yeah, this is another card that, like, if your opponent's playing a deck with a lot of enchantments, you got to kill this Attestant Champion, just like the other things. Like, you got to kill them. Um, so this, this makes every single enchantment better. Um, any enchantment that, that I talked about for, if you're, you know, if you, if you're, if you're thinking about like how, what I rated any enchantment in white, blue, black, or red, this makes all of them better that I didn't really mention this card at the time. So every single enchantment is, is now just a little bit better because of this card. Um, so, uh, Yeah. So uh, there we go. Um, as far as rating, it's probably just an A. Because, um, yeah, there's there's a there's a lot of really good enchantments that you can kind of pair with this thing. Um, this is definitely a four of in any of your enchantment deck. I mean, this is maybe just like an A minus or B plus, though, because it's not a four of in multiple decks. It's kind of like just a four of in, like, your enchantment deck. Um, yeah, let's go A minus for Satessin Champion. Um, yeah, I still do like the, the deck reviews and stuff. Yeah. Yep. Not legendary. I mean, just like Risen Reef, Edgewall and Keeper. It's like that kind of card. Like it's, I underrated both of those cards originally and we're not doing it again. So we're going A minus. Satessin Petitioner, one GG, two, two. When it enters the battlefield, you gain life equal to your devotion to green. There was a similar card in the original Theros with this that I think was a, a, was a 2GG for a 3-3 three, three, gain life equal to your devotion to green. And that was a really, really good sideboard card. 
uh, for for like mono green decks and really green heavy decks against red decks at the time. Um, mono red aggro is, is pretty dead right now. Like it just doesn't see a ton of play. But if it wasn't, this would be another really good cyborg card. They just made it cheaper and made it a 2-2 instead of a 3-3. Yeah, Nylea's Disciple. I, I cast a lot of Nylea's Disciples back in the day. Like that was definitely a card. Like that was me playing a lot of green creature decks and playing a whole lot of Nylea's Disciples. And, and there was a lot more red at the time. I know, four mono red. Um, so yeah, so I think I think we're going to go with like a, a D plus here. Um, kind of like a, a fringe, uh, maybe a little bit better than a fringe sideboard card, but basically that. Uh, Satessin Skirmisher, 1G for a 2-1 with Consolation whenever an enchantment enters the battlefield under control, gets plus one, plus one until end of turn. Nope, we'd rather just play Satessin Champion and... Nessian Wanderer, play like these two as your early things, and then play all of your enchantments after that. We don't need any more other those other things. So Tess in Training, 1G, when uh, enchant creature you control, when it enters the battlefield, draw a card, and creature gets plus one, plus zero, and has Trample. Um, this one's not so bad. I'm going to give this one a D plus, basically because of the ETB draw card. Um, so, you know, it's still just two mana draw a card, which isn't so bad, but I mean, obviously this is supposed to pair well with the champion. You put this on the champion, you pump up the power and uh, draw a card, but of course it also would put a counter on it and draw another card. So obviously these two just work perfectly together. You get to turn this into a draw two. So two mana, like a two mana draw two is a, is just a really good rate. Um, you know, like that's, that's an awesome card, just two mana draw two. But then you also give your creature plus one plus zero trample. So obviously it's just amazing with a Tessin champion. So I'm gonna give it a, a D plus, but without Sintess and Champion, it's it's pretty lackluster. Um, but yeah, maybe it's just so good there that that it works. Um, all right, Scola Grove Dancer, one in a G, two two enchant cre enchantment creature. Whenever a land is put into your graveyard from anywhere, you gain a life, and then two in a G, put the top card of your library into your graveyard. I don't love it. Um, it you know pairs well with like fabled passage obviously you would play this because of like the enchantment creature and stuff it does pair pretty well with nissa to be on or nylea sorry nylea to be honest because of nylea's ability if it's like a land card that you don't want you can put it into your graveyard and then if it's put into a graveyard you get to gain a life so i don't know you know you have a, a couple of those out there you know so it kind of pairs with those things so i think i'm going to give this a d like it, you could you could play it you could play it. And because, you know, it is an enchant creature, enchantment creature, so, you know, it does trigger all these other things. The green saga, too. Okay, yeah. Yeah, you're playing it with the saga. So, yeah, we'll go with the D. Yeah, it pairs well with the green cavalier. Yeah, the green cavalier puts some lands into your graveyard, gains some life. Absolutely. I don't think you're really activating it that much, but it's basically, you know, like a two mana 2 2 that. You know, you get to gain some life, and it also has the bonuses being an enchantment creature. And then, yeah, I guess I guess if you're playing Golgari Undergrowth, um, and so you're milling yourself a lot with Undergrowth stuff, um, yeah, it can be even better there. And you can really gain gain a lot more life. It could be a sideboard card for those decks against against aggro. All right, Voracious Typhoon. 2GG for a 4-4. Four, four. So 4 mana 4-4, four, four, that's not bad. But, you know, kills, you know, blocks Questing Beast. <laughs> but then you can also escape it for 7 and exile 4 cards and it comes back with 3 plus 1 plus 1 counters on it. I mean, it's not it's not bad, but I mean, it just shows you kind of like the power level of standard that this is just going to be an L. Like, this is just going to be a limited card. It kind of shows you the power level of creatures. But there's, it's got, you know, pretty good stats. I can see, like, you know, 20 years ago, that being a really impactful card. It is a snake. The big snake. Snake beast. War Briar Blessing. 1G Enchant Aura. When it enters the battlefield, Enchanted Creature fights up to one target creature you don't control. Enchanted Creature gets plus zero, plus two. Um, so yeah, basically, 
you know, this could be a removal spell if you want to be like a mono green deck, man. There is so like you can just build a mono green constellation deck with just what's here in the set. <laughs> you don't even need the other sets. But yeah, you can uh um you know if you want a removal spell, if you want a fight spell, like a a rabid bite kind of thing, this has extra bonuses, so I'll give it a D. Um I'll give the Grove Dancer a D plus. We kind of get talked more good stuff about that. And then Wolf Wolf Willow Haven. 1G Enchant Land. Whenever Enchanted Land is tapped for mana, its controller adds an additional G. And then you can also pay four and a G, sacrifice Wolf Willow Haven, create a 2-2 wolf creature token. Activate this ability only during your turn. Wow, this card is good. I didn't even know I, like this was card at NC printed. This is good. This is just this is just yeah, this is like this is like playing like rampant growth. Like you actually have two mana ramp here. Um that also has the the all the enchantment things that it gives you. And so yeah, it's actually like two mana ramp and standard. We haven't had two mana ramp and standard in a while. And like this this is like two mana ramp. Um yeah, I mean this is this is a lot better than Gift of Paradise because that costs three. Because that's the thing is like we've we've traditionally just had like recently we've had like Gift of Paradise is at three and all the other stuff at three and ramp at three. We haven't had like non-creature ramp at two. Like the two mana ramp's been like creatures that like die to removal and stuff like that. This is non-creature ramp at two. Um, and yeah, you can play it on turn three and you put it on a, if you can put this on an untapped land, then you can immediately tap that land and it only costs like one, one effective mana also. And then you also just have this ability if, if you need it, like, you know, you can, you can make a two, two. Very good card. Very good card. Um, yeah, grow spiral, you know, you have to play Two different colors for Growth Spiral, and you have to have extra lands in hand. This is just ramps whether you have the lands in hand or not. But yeah, Growth Spiral is also Growth Spiral is also just one of the best cards in Standard right now. Uh, yeah, so I think I'm gonna give this like a, a probably like a B, probably like a like a, a card that'll see a good amount of Standard play in a support role. Yeah, it's like a B. That's a good one. And yeah, more devotion. And then when you also, I mean, when you add in like the devotion part and also the like the enchantment synergies and stuff, this could just be a B plus, honestly, or more. But yeah, it's basically just all ramp. Like, man, this is, if you like ramp, you like green. All right, so our top five cards. Um, so Tessin Champion was an A. I gave Satessin Champion an A minus. Why did I do that? All right, going back. This is an A. Uh, that's an A. Nyx Bloom, Nyx Bloom Ancients an A. Dryad of Illusion Grove is an A. Like those are probably the three best cards in this. In for blue, for blue, or sorry, those are the three best cards for green. And then we have Nylea at B plus, and then a bunch of Bs. A Rasta, Destiny Spinner. Which one's going to be the fifth card? Destiny Spinner, A Rasta, Mystic Repeal. What's Mystic Repeal doing? That. Oh, yeah, that card. Honestly, Wolf, Wolf Willow Haven may be the next best card in the set. That's probably it. I'm probably gonna give this the the fifth one, the fifth slot. Um. So there we go. All right. So that's green. We got multicolor and all the rest of the cards. We got about we've gone through 205. So we got about 50 cards left. We're gonna go ahead and talk about multicolor and artifact and the lands together. But of course, we don't really have to talk about the basics. Um. So yeah, we're going to add all those together for our last video. Those of y'all on YouTube, hit that like button, leave those comments. What cards are you really excited about in the set? What do you want to see me build around right away in standard? Also with the ratings, what cards am I too high on? What cards am I too low on? What cards am I sleeping on? Um, all that kind of stuff. You know, Leave those comments on YouTube, hit that like button. I'd appreciate it. 
But uh, there we go. That's green. So thank you so much for watching. And I'll see you for the last section, the multicolor. All right.